Coming up this evening on NTD Business. Shares of Facebook's parent company Meta still falling as we hear the closing bell. They're down over 26% in just 24 hours. Experts say car prices will remain high this year. What's driving up the costs and when can you catch a break? And a new bill to counter China moving forward in the House. Some lawmakers aren't happy with it. What are they concerned about? That and much more coming up on NTD Business. Good evening. Great to have you with us. Paul Graney here live in New York City. In the fourth largest crypto heist on record, cyber criminals broke into a crypto platform called Wormhole and made off with around $320 million. But surprisingly, Wormhole developers say they managed to get the funds back. Wormhole is a popular bridge linking to the world's biggest blockchains, Ethereum and Solana. Crypto holders often don't operate on just one blockchain, so they need bridges to link one chain to another. Apparently, hackers made off with 120,000 digital tokens from Wormhole. But later, developers said all the stolen funds had been restored and the platform was back up and running. It's unclear how the funds were retrieved. Wormhole says it'll release an incident report later. But blockchain analytics firm Elliptic says Wormhole offered the hackers a $10 million bounty to return the stolen funds. But despite all the risks involved with blockchain as a new technology, GameStop is entering the world of NFTs, or non-fungible tokens. You can think of them like digital collectibles. GameStop's teaming up with a blockchain startup called Immutable X to launch its own NFT marketplace later this year. The company's also announced a $100 million fund to support game developers who are trying to create NFT content. GameStop's trying to take advantage of the booming NFT market. It hit nearly $25 billion in sales last year. That's up over 20,000% from the year before, according to data from market tracker DAP Radar. Immutable X is on the second largest blockchain network, Ethereum. So NFTs have blown up over the past year. NTD's Phil Zoe has more on what exactly they are and what's going on in the NFT space. NFTs are non-fungible tokens. What exactly are they? It's basically a one-of-a-kind digital asset that it belongs to you and only you. It could be a, a picture, a music file. It could be anything that could be collected and traded bought and sold between two different users. And why is it unique? Can't be copied, which means that when it's on the blockchain, it's the first and only that'll ever exist on the blockchain with that NFT. Something that no one could mess with, that no one could break, uh, that would ensure that um, the property ownership was defined, right? So that there was authenticity um, in that art piece itself. Artists have used this to create digital art and create digital scarcity behind their art. Painter Carly Long just learned about NFTs last month, but she's diving right in by creating several NFTs already, with plans to release a limited collection to her thousands of fans on social media. I think right now there's definitely a huge learning curve out there, but there's also a lot of people who recognize that and see that and are working to make it more accessible. Besides art, it can also be used for business contracts. Instead of signing a contract, scanning it back and send it, it, send it to the company, you basically use your bank account, which in this case is a digital wallet, to sign. Mark Beckman is a marketing professor at New York University's Stern School of Business. With this new technology, brands now have the ability to both communicate directly with their fans and their fan bases, as well as to create new streams of revenue for monetization. Brands like Space One Industries by Nick Graham, who famously created the underwear company Joe Boxer. He says NFTs allow him to be more creative with his designs. Rather than go through the process of manufacturing them and, you know, waiting for three or four months to, for them to come back, you have immediate you can sell them immediately. You can be as creative as you want. You can make people fly around. You can. Graham is working on a fashion show for the Metaverse Fashion Week coming up in one month. Astronaut outfits, bomber jackets, um, using the Apollo 11 as I work with NASA. James Bond in space kind of 
uh, it looks. Very exciting. Experts say we're still in the early stages of NFTs, with lots to look forward to. 2022 will probably be one of the biggest years for NFTs. Phil Zhou, NTD News. A Wall Street snap to four session winning streak today. All three benchmarks closed much lower. The Dow fell 518 points, about one and a half percent. S and P 500 lost 112 points, about two and four tenths of a percent. The tech heavy Nasdaq, though, suffered the most, losing 539 points, about three and seven tenths of a percent. Amazon, though, reported earnings after the bell. Shares went up 18 percent after hours. Did announce today it's going to hike the price for its Prime membership from 119 to 139 dollars. And shares of Meta, Facebook's parent company, declined all day and through the closing bell today. They're down over 26 percent. It's the biggest one-day haircut Facebook's seen since going public in 2012. Within 24 hours of releasing a weaker-than-expected earnings report, it's now worth $230 billion less than it was only on Wednesday afternoon. Here's Wedbush's Dan Ives. Facebook was an unmitigated disaster. You're really starting to see the advertising headwinds from Apple and its privacy issues. This is a black eye quarter for Facebook and something that's really going to send shockwaves across the market. And shockwaves we got. As we just mentioned, the Nasdaq, where Facebook is listed, is down over three and seven tenths of a percent today. Facebook's competitors, Twitter and Snapchat, also falling on Thursday as investors brace for their earnings releases over the next week. Meta is blaming two companies, companies outside its media empire for its coming up short, Apple and TikTok. TikTok is arguably Facebook's biggest competitor right now. Mark Zuckerberg admitted as much. While Facebook lost users for the first time in its history last quarter, TikTok became the most visited website in the world. I think there's a massive shift to TikTok. I think that's been a competitive headwind for Facebook, uh, for the likes of Snap, for Twitter. And and you are starting to see engagement starting to get reduced, especially coming out of the pandemic. Meta also blamed changes Apple made to its iPhone. It's now harder for Facebook to track you as you use your phone. That means it can't target you with ads quite as well as before. Mark Zuckerberg says that'll cost Facebook $10 billion in revenue this year alone. So Facebook not performing too well. What about Meta's Metaverse? It's 3D virtual world. Zuckerberg revealed the company's plans to to create fanfare last quarter, but admits it will take time before it's actually generating revenue. Here he is during yesterday's earnings call. And this fully realized vision is still a ways off. And although the direction is clear, Our path ahead is is not yet perfectly defined. News just in that Snapchat beat earnings estimates this evening. Shares are up over 50% in after-hours trading. Wild market swings. But drug maker Merck is more upbeat about its performance than Facebook, at least. It is a new pill that treats COVID-19. It's called Molnupiravir. Merck sold over almost a billion dollars worth of the pill in the fourth quarter alone. Now it says it's on track for another five to six billion dollars in sales this year. The FDA just authorized the pill in December. Since then, the company has delivered 1.4 million courses across the United States. We're also seeing historically high prices for both new and used cars this year. Experts predict those prices could stick around for much of 2022. So we take a look at what's driving the cost up and when buyers could catch a break. A shortage of parts, limited production, and surging demand for both new and used cars. It's all driving consumers to pay record sky-high prices for those few cars that dealerships have available. Driving that is some of the shift toward trucks and SUVs and higher contented vehicles. But at the same time, because of this lack of inventory, dealers are not required to discount at all. According to J.D. Power, the average transaction price for a new car was over $45,000 last December. 
That's up 29% from 2019. And according to Edmonds, prices for used cars ended the year with an average price of nearly $30,000. That's up 29% from a year earlier. If you were trying to find a reasonably priced used car, because the car you have is just conked out, it's going to be much difficult. So when can buyers catch a break? Experts say availability could start to increase as production starts to come back online and the supply of car parts improves. It's not just microchips that we're seeing shortages of. We're seeing resin used in paint. We're seeing tire shortages and even wiring harnesses and on and on. J.D. Power forecasts the average wholesale price of used cars could fall about 9% from the fourth quarter of 2021 to the fourth quarter of this year. But that won't get prices to where they were before the pandemic. In 2023, we'll, we'll expect prices to start to come down, but I don't expect to see a return to the old days. J.D. Power says they've also seen a rapid shift in the kind of vehicles that consumers are buying. More are now looking at expensive luxury cars, trucks, SUVs and electric vehicles, according to J.D. Some bad news for chocolate lovers. Hershey's is raising its prices this year. It says it's increasing prices to offset higher ingredient and labor costs. Heard that before. But Hershey's hopes the hike won't hurt sales. It's raised prices before. Customers apparently accepted it. Treats like Reese's and Kit Kats are still going strong. Retail sales for the company's top brands grew more than 12% last year. And since the Trump administration placed multiple Chinese companies on the trade blacklist, you may be surprised that U.S. semiconductor firms are still exporting to China. Now, Republican senators are urging the Biden administration to close a loophole in export controls on China's top chip maker, SMIC. They say it's a clear national security threat. The Deuce Fake Quarter has the details. Republican Senators Bill Haggerty and Tom Cotton have sent a letter to Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo urging her agency to strengthen export controls to China's biggest chipmaker, SMIC. U.S. export controls should be attuned to uh, ensuring that Chinese companies don't have access to the latest, most cutting-edge technologies. The senators said they were disheartened by media reports suggesting the Department of Commerce is blocking efforts to tighten export controls on U.S. technology destined for SMIC, which they say enjoys close ties to the Chinese military. We are exporting semiconductor manufacturing equipment. This is technology that can be used to produce uh, military-use goods. One China affairs analyst says another concern is that SMIC is working with Huawei, which the U.S. sanctioned over national security concerns. SMIC has become Huawei's largest chip supplier. In other words, it has become Huawei's strategic ally, posing a threat to U.S. national security. The Trump administration put SMIC on a trade blacklist in late 2020 over concerns that SMIC aids China's military. Business law professor says during the U.S.-China trade talks, China requested that the U.S. bend the rules in certain tech-sensitive sectors, including for chip manufacturing. As a result of this compromise between the United States and China, the United States allowed the export of these dual-use technologies uh, and uh, keeping these uh, products, the flow of these products, open under certain exceptions. You have to apply for a license. Normally, U.S. suppliers have to apply for a special license before shipping any U.S. items to a company on the blacklist. These licenses also need a tough standard of review. But for SMIC, that tough standard only applied to specialized chipmaking equipment. According to documents released by Congress, U.S. suppliers to Huawei and SMIC got billions of dollars worth of licenses even after they were blacklisted. Tech policy expert Stephen Ezel says SMIC also plays a key role in helping the Chinese regime steal intellectual property around the world. Uh, SMIC has been directly connected to uh, billions of dollars of intellectual property theft from Taiwanese firms alone since the year 2003. FBI Director Christopher Wray said Monday the United States is facing a new level of threat from China that's more brazen and damaging than ever before. There is just no country that presents a broader threat to our ideas, our innovation, and our economic security than China. 
Colares thinks the Department of Commerce should be cautious when reviewing and giving out special licenses. Under the Code of Federal Regulations, export licenses can be revoked. Faye Quarter, NTD News. With that, we're going to take a quick break, but still to come this evening. Tickets for this year's Super Bowl selling for the highest prices in history. How much are they going for? And Jeff Bezos is getting a new super yacht. But to actually get it, a bridge in the Netherlands will have to be taking a, taken apart temporarily. Why is that? That and more coming up on NTD Business. It's just clear as day. The media, whether it's broadcast, cable, or print media, has become extremely biased. And I started looking online for alternative ways to, to get information. And I saw an ad for a free trial. And I looked at it and I said, Epoch Times? I mean, come on, this is end of days type of stuff? I mean, what are they gonna be talking about here? And I said, well, it's a free trial, let me dig in. Is it giving me both sides? Is it giving me an objective point of view here? I have looked for opportunities to see where they might be biased, and I don't find it. It has given me a level of trust in media that I didn't think I'd ever get back. I love the Epic Times because it has renewed uh, my faith in the idea that a reliable, responsible, non-biased source of information is available. And I can say that I love it because of that. Secure, the true solution for your digital privacy and security. Secure is a private and secure messaging and email solution hosted in Switzerland using military grade encryption and Swiss privacy laws, giving you true privacy. Secure is 100% private and does not collect or sell any of your personal data. Secure's Helix technology connects you securely to our Swiss servers without the need of a VPN, guaranteeing privacy and security for all your communications. Secure Messenger doesn't require your phone number or any personal data that hackers target. Chat by Invites allows you to chat privately and securely with anyone outside of your secure network without the need for others to download Secure. Secure Send offers you a private and secure way to email anyone outside of Secure. You won't find this level of privacy or security on any other email or instant messaging application. Visit secure.com. Regain and protect your privacy today. Welcome back. Inflation is coming to a stadium near you. Tickets for this year's Super Bowl are selling for the highest prices ever. Los Angeles Rams are facing off against the Cincinnati Bengals in the Rams' home field, the SoFi Stadium, on February 13th. According to SeatGeek, the average Super Bowl audience member will pay nearly $10,500 for tickets. StubHub gives a more conservative estimate at $9,800. Stingy football fans will find the cheapest tickets at $7,000, while the most expensive ones are selling for $65,000. So it makes the tickets so expensive. For one thing, it'll be played in L.A., notoriously expensive city. With the Rams playing in their home city, prices will be exacerbated by the high demand. And Buntweiser in one of its famous Kleinsdales will return to the Super Bowl this year. The beer company has a new commercial that celebrates the ability to overcome life's challenges. Brands are paying as much as $6 million or more for half-minute commercial slots. They hope to stand out in front of the year's biggest audience on U.S. television. Advertisement shows an injured Clydesdale working through setbacks with the help of a vet, a stable man, and an attentive dog, too. The horse makes a triumphant recovery while down never means out flashes across the screen. 
Budweiser has made some of the most memorable Super Bowl commercials over the years, some featuring frogs or puppies. The majestic Clydesdales have represented the brand in television ads since the 1950s. Last year, the beer producer did not produce a Super Bowl ad for the first time in 35 years and instead made a donation in support of awareness of COVID-19 vaccines. The company hopes this new ad will spark feelings of optimism among viewers after two years of challenges from the global pandemic. Scientists have detected what appears to be an incredibly dense star behaving unlike anything they've ever seen. They suspect it may be type of an exotic astrophysical object whose existence has until now only been guessed at. Anthony's Andrew Thomas has more. Natasha Hurley Walker is a radio astronomer at the Curtin University arm of the International Center for Radio Astronomy Research in Australia and lead author of the study published this week in the journal Nature. We don't know of any kind of object that does that. We know about pulsars, which are radio sources that turn on and off very quickly, you know, a few times a second. And we know about exploding stars and they change over months. But to find something that was switching on and off like clockwork every 20 minutes, it's just really, really unexpected. The object was spotted using the Murchison Wide Field Array Telescope in Outback, Western Australia, and unleashed huge bursts of energy roughly three times per hour when viewed from Earth during two months in 2018, researchers said. Now, these kinds of objects were predicted to exist. They're called ultra-long period magnetars, but nobody ever expected to find one. We thought they would be rare or invisible or just you'd never see it. Um, and certainly no one ever expected one to be so bright, let alone so bright, an undergraduate student could find it in their project. An ultra-long period magnetar is a variety of neutron star, which is the compact, collapsed core of a massive star that exploded as a supernova. It is highly magnetized and rotates relatively slowly, as opposed to fast-spinning neutron star objects called pulsars. Those appear from Earth to blink on and off within seconds. Andrew Thomas... NTD News. And Jeff Bezos' new super yacht is almost complete. But before he can enjoy it, a bridge in the Netherlands will have to be disassembled so the vessel can go through it. To reach the ocean, the yacht has to sail through Rotterdam and pass beneath a local bridge. And even though it's a lift bridge, it doesn't have the clearance needed for the super yacht to get through. So the city will temporarily remove the central part of the bridge to allow the vessel to pass. The bridge is a symbol of Rotterdam's industrial history, and tampering with the structure has raised the ire of some locals. The city believes the construction of the super yacht is an important money maker. The Dutch firm that's building the yacht will cover the cost of the bridge work. And finally, from the frozen lands beyond the wall to the destroyed throne room, New Game of Thrones studio tour takes fans behind the scenes of the successful television series. It takes place at one of the several locations where the fantasy show was filmed. Denise Neil Woodrow has the details. Linden Mill Studios in Banbridge, Northern Ireland, opens up the world of Westeros to the public with an array of costumes, props and sets on display. You can expect to step into the epic world of Game of Thrones uh, and everything that went into making the show. Um, so what they saw on the TV, they can expect to see here. The self-guided studio tour takes place at an authentic Game of Thrones filming location. Because so much of the... So much of Game of Thrones has been filmed across the landscapes of Northern Ireland, so it's fantastic for audiences and visitors uh, and fans of Game of Thrones to, to come to one place and see everything. Some of the actors from the series were taking in the studio tour setup. Ian Beatty played Merrin Trant. I think the fans are just going to be delighted with a studio tour because everything they see here was used in the show. These are the actual sets that we walked on. These are the actual costumes we wore, uh, the swords we swung, you name it, it's all here. Daniel Portman, who played Podrick Payne, says it was an iconic show. It kind of changed the landscape of television. So I, I, I hope that people still enjoy the show for, for, for years to come and having this place open is, is a great chance for people to see how it's made. Natalia Tenner, who played Osha in the series, says she misses the people she worked with during filming. When we were here, we 
kind of really bonded because we were kind of away from home, so we became a family in Belfast. And uh, I mean, and the people of Belfast always treated us so so well mm -hmm. when when we were here. Um, so there's lots to miss, but I mean that's the sort of sign of a great experience, isn't it? The 110 square foot attraction features sets including the Great Hall at Winterfell, King's Landing and Dragonstone, as well as interactive experiences. Based on the novels entitled A Song of Ice and Fire by American author George R. R. Martin, Game of Thrones first aired in 2011, becoming a global phenomenon over its eight seasons. The award-winning HBO series wrapped up in 2019 with a finale that divided fans. The prequel House of the Dragon, which is set 200 years before the original series, is scheduled to premiere this year. The Game of Thrones studio tour opens to the public on Friday. Neil Woodrow, NTD News. That's the latest business updates for today, but you can still catch NTD Evening News with Stephanie Cox. That's at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. For NTD Business, though, it's all for today. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Did you know YouTube only keeps selective videos on its platform? So if you want to make sure you get the full picture, just subscribe to our newsletter. Go to newsletter.ntd.com and sign up. It's free.